welcome to your horoscope for June of 2020 in Capricorn. This is a busy month. We've got eclipses. We've got 60% of our planets moving in a retrograde fashion, which means we are going back over some things that have already been in your wheelhouse. Not to mention, I think it's really important to understand that when there are eclipses or what the moon is doing, this is going to have a heavier impact on you in your relationships because cancer rules in the general your relationship houses and this is a month of two big eclipses and then we've got one right after in july which is also going to put an impact here on you and your relationships so as i was sitting with your horoscope before i was going through all of the information one of the things that continues to come to me and i think of capricorn is this has been promised to be a very big year. It's like 2020 is the year for Capricorn, right? And whether you have liked it, loved it, hated it, you're over it, I still think that it is. Because as we come to June, I think that this month is a solid indicator, especially with Mars coming home into the energy of Aries, that it is time, Capricorn, to take some action. Yes, nourish yourself. Yes, let your spirit guide you because you've changed, you've shifted, certainly over the last two and a half years with Saturn in your sign. But this is a time for action. Go back, clean up, clean out, let some things go. It is time for assertive, decisive action action because after this eclipse in July, Capricorn, it's almost as if you begin this path of really being set free to do this next chapter of your life. So I think that as we are here in June, this is your cleanup call so that we can get ready to do the damn thing as we go forward into 2021. So I do still think it is a big year for you. Let's finish these energies nice and strong. So let's jump in here and talk about what's going on this month. Let me let me stop preaching at you. Let's talk about what's going on this month, okay? Right at the beginning of the month on the 2nd, we're going to see Mercury moving um, into the retrograde shadow energy. So he's going to retrograde on the 18th in the energy of Cancer, so just across the street in that 7th house space. But on the 2nd, he starts to slow down. So if you start to see that as of the 2nd, communications and relationships are starting to look a little bit more like things from the past or things from the past are starting to come up or delays in communication and relationships are even happening. Just give it some grace. Mercury truly at the level of gadgets and phones and devices and all of these things really can wreak havoc on it. So you're trying to have a conversation with your child or your loved one or your business partner and you're like, why haven't they texted me back? It has been 20 minutes. Truly, as of the second, they may not have received it. So give Mercury his street cred and give some grace immediately as we come into this month because things are starting to slow down to shift for this retrograde, okay? On the fifth of the month, we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Sagittarius. So just here in the 12th house for you. The full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. But at the lunar eclipse, this is a complete reset of your emotions and your world in this area. Because it's 12th house, this is a spiritual awakening, right? Right? spiritual awakening but it is still moon energy so even though it's in Sagittarius I think this has just as much to do with just your relationships in general as it does with 12th house things but the 12th house things that I think of and I feel on here is like this eclipse is like what are these patterns of belief perception Sagittarius behavior that we've continued to let go on that are actually going to be our own undoing, right? Like we're seeing them, that it's okay to detach from those things because life's not getting better with these particular patterns. I also think it is a nice time to ground down and nurture and nourish your spirit, your body. Do you need a cleanse right now? Are you taking a little electronic vacation from things, right? This could be a time too where Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. He is also retrograde at this time. So the ultimate teacher, the ultimate guru is showing up for you in your life. And I think that that person might be you. You've been living with you. You've been living with your patterns. You've been living with whatever's hidden, whether it be a creative talent, um, 
your voice, whether it's been a place that you need to bring to transition or to culmination and to heal, compassion, forgiveness are your friends at this particular moon. And it's like, where can you apply those things to let go of the past and move yourself forward? Well, the path of that begins over this next six months starting here. On the 18th, Mercury moves into retrograde in that energy of Cancer and will come out July 12th. Now, 7th house is lit up. In a retrograde, we review, we reconnect, we re-edit. You're going to go back over relationships in your life. And the number one question I would give you and pose to you for this retrograde time is, does this relationship meet your ideals and actual physical needs for security cancer can you build a family can you build a safe structure do you have protection in this relationship and you can apply that to any relationship that you need to the question is here is this secure for you and if you can't answer yes to that Look at your review time. What can you do to make those changes? You've had a spiritual awakening over here with this moon. What needs to shift or adjust? Can you add more security yourself to the relationships that you're involved with? You've had a spiritual experience with this moon. What do you have to give as well here, Capricorn? Let this guide some different things in your relationships. Now, Venus is still retrograde. Mercury is retrograde. These are phenomenal for bringing old relationships, old lovers, even if they just show up in your mind back to the table. And of course, old issues could come up. Whatever comes back from the past is not coming on accident. It's coming for your review. So stand, face it, and handle that, okay? On the 20th, you get some help to do all of this work. We've got the sun moving into the energy of cancer, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. You're motivated here. You want to be seen. You want to do the work in this area. You want this area of your life to thrive and to be vital. So I think you're putting in the work and the effort here. Now, in the north, we're also welcoming summer here, and our friends in the south will be coming into winter. So we have a season change, right? Now, because we've got all of these planets in retrograde, I don't know that we're here in June and we're like, yes, new season. I think we get that a little bit more in July, but your season change is right here, Capricorn, and your feet and your energy and your efforts are a part of the season change. Now, just a day later, we welcome in a new moon happening in Cancer, but it's a new moon solar eclipse. This one happens to be at zero degrees of Cancer. So again, in your relationships, I know this is a fresh start, but also a significant ending at zero degrees. Something fresh is rolling in and something that doesn't belong there anymore is rolling out, right? And this includes, because it's Cancerian energy, I would ask you, um, Capricorn, in the energy of your family and who you consider family, right? Cancer energy. Um, do adjustments need to be made in this particular area, right? Do you have um, a relationship with your mother that needs to be adjusted? Do you have a relationship as a mother where you feel like some things need to be adjusted and you can come fresh to a new place, to a new season? Because don't underestimate that with this Cancerian energy that maybe the change needs to come through a family structure for you. Oh, some of you may be actually changing your family structure. Did you adopt? Did somebody move in? Did somebody move out? That could definitely be a piece of these relationships as well but just know zero degrees means this is a significant start for you okay on the 23rd <laughs> neptune is going to go into retrograde in the energy of pisces so this lights up your third house neptune retrograde is going to help you recreate in the mind right your thinking your communication but he's going to help you create a new ideal of this area what's your new ideal life what's the new ideal way that you think and that you communicate and that you teach and you perceive information neptune retrograde is going to help you create the ideal over the next handful of months so that as he comes out of retrograde in november you can create that in a very material um reality right and i always use the example that a chair before it was a chair was just an idea. So you're recreating this area of your life. I also think that Neptune retrograde in the third house gives you permission to go back to decisions you've made, things that you've said, perceptions you've had about things and give yourself some forgiveness. Not let yourself off the hook, but give yourself some grace. I was always taught that grace is the slack the universe gives us for being ridiculous. So 
if you've lived, you've maybe been ridiculous at a time, and it is okay to go back and make peace and allow the beauty of Neptunian energy to dissolve what doesn't need to be there anymore because it may actually just be holding you back. So freedom is a beautiful energy with Neptune. Plus, if you are a writer, a creator, and anything like that, this is so phenomenal for bringing those creations forward into a concrete reality. On the 25th, Venus is going to come out of retrograde in the energy of Gemini. Now, this is going to be at five degrees of Gemini, so this is in your sixth house, okay? Daily routines, your health, your wellness, all of these things, as Venus was retrograde, you were reviewing the value. Maybe you needed to go back into your business, or you need to go back into your health, and you need to stop and slow down and give it more value and more evaluation to it. Maybe you were even investing more financially or seeing where you needed to invest financially. COVID has done a number on us, so this could be, did you have a loan come through? Did you need to make adjustments in your daily routine of earning in some way, shape, or form? Now that Venus is out of retrograde, she's going to help you actually implement those things. You can see the value of the relationships you've made. You can see the value of the financial investments, even maybe with Gemini energy, the value of your marketing. I also think that Venus here out of retrograde now, because Gemini is such a social energy that even here in the sixth house, she'll help you go make the new connections and share information that you need to in order to bring um, a fullness and a harmony and a magnetism to this area of your life. So the gym may not open back up, but you know, are you joining an online fitness group or nutrition group? Like really feeding yourself this month, Capricorn, I think is a nice energy as well. So whatever it is, Venus is ready to bring some emotional intelligence and harmony and magnetism to this area of your life, which could include for some of you, yeah, freelance or independent projects, you get hired on for them now, or you receive payment for them now. That could be a thing as well. On the 28th, Mars moves into the energy of Aries, and this is it. Take action. Mars in Aries is comfortable. He's happy, so he is in full power. This is in your fourth house. I am telling you, if there are changes to be made in your home, home, family, real estate, property, your psychological foundation, with women in your life, take action. Trust your instincts. Trust your intuition and make decisive action here. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go out there and go all cutthroat. Ask some questions. Run it by somebody because if it is a truthful decision or a truthful action, the truth is the truth. And anybody listening outside of you would likely be able to hear it as well. And then you can trust that and go forward with it. But changes to the home will definitely be a thing. Now, Mars is Mars and Aries is Aries. So this could also be a fight. If there is a fight or a conflict that needs to come to the home zone in order to rebalance things, Mars will absolutely bring it to your attention. So don't be surprised. You have the skills. You have everything you need to uh, be in this particular battle, but also to come out of the other side with this area rebalanced like it needs to be. So don't be surprised if that comes up as well. Do what you need to do, okay? As we end this month, we're going to end with a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, which is the second and a third that they're going to have, a second in a series of three that are going to happen this year. We saw the first one happen in April when they were both out of retrograde. Now, this lit up you, your first house, right? So think back to April. Jupiter and Pluto came together and they gave you focus and they gave you drive and they gave you a mission and a movement forward. You were moving forward differently towards success, towards something new. And they showed you the value of why you would shift and change and allow something new to come in. You started it right then. Okay. So think back. Now, as we land here today in June, what's happening is they're both retrograde. So you're going back inside of you to continue to see, okay, what's the value? What's the continued value and wisdom of why I would die off Pluto, not continue to do something that way. Let something shed, let something evolve, let something transform. What's the wisdom? It's gonna take you back to your own path, your old behaviors, your own thinking, living, decision-making, and seeing the value of if your strategy is good and applicable to you moving forward. These two in retrograde here, I love because they show you that you have an immense capacity, Capricorn, to surmount and overcome your challenges and be efficiently and effectively successful provided you see the wisdom in not doing things that were not working in the way that they were getting done. So big energy here, and then we'll see it culminate in November, and I cannot wait to see who you are in November. 
this is energy that it's like you cannot not change with it. And it's not always about change and be different, but we are like seasons. We are constantly changing and evolving and shedding, even if it seems very small and incremental. But at each opportunity, we have the chance to welcome ourselves, meet ourselves, and invite other people to that table as well. So that is very much so what I believe you're doing this month and making some big decisions. Um, on things, especially over this next five months, that are going to clear the pathway for Capricorn to Capricorn, okay? All right, you guys, I think it's going to be a busy month. I hope it's an enjoyable one. Please let me know how it's manifesting for you in the comment section down below. I hope you're enjoying the eat and greets. Man, I'm having a good time with this, so I hope you guys are as well. And as it continues to go on, we'll bring more friends to the table. I would love to hear more about what you guys would like to learn about, who you'd like to see over here as well. So let me know that down below as well. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you my love this month, Capricorn, and I'll see you next month.